Shumla Akinode and Ezra Olubi founded Paystack, an online payment platform, and by 2020, Stripe, a tech giant in the finance space, acquired Paystack for over $200 million, making the two Paystack founders overnight millionaires. But how did they achieve that in a very short time? Can you replicate the same thing? The answers are coming straight at you in this episode of Miracle vs. Expected series. Other episodes will be linked in the description box below and in the cards above. Miracle vs. Expected is an original YouTube series where we analyze self-made millionaires. We give our take on how much of their success was due to hard work or pure luck. We also evaluate how viable the industry which made the millionaire most of the money is and how profitable it would be for you if you joined the industry today. If you're in love with this kind of content, just type Miracle vs. Expected in the comment section and also drop the names of other self-made millionaires you would love us to analyze their success and we will feature one of the millionaires mentioned in the comment section in the next episode of this series. If you're new here on this channel, we discuss everything business and finance related. How to make money online, we review businesses, websites and apps. And finally, we discuss a little about investing and personal finance. So if all that sounds good to you, then go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and notification bell so that you can be informed anytime we put out a new video. With that out of the way, let us get into the video. Background Shala was born in Lagos, which is one of the biggest commercial cities in Nigeria. Possessing a love for computers right from a young age, he acquired a computer at the age of 16 and began his coding journey. Born to a well-to-do Yoruba family, he was able to complete an undergraduate degree from one of the best private universities in Nigeria. Paystack co-founder Ezra Olubi doesn't have a background too different from that of Shola. What brought them together was their love for computer codes and they began working together shortly after graduating from college. After working together for a while, Paystack was born. Paystack Payment Limited came into existence in 2015, although incorporated in Delaware, USA. It is the pioneer API-based payment service provider in Nigeria. The software allows two applications to interface or talk to one another, or put differently, it allows users to set up online payment gateways to enable their businesses to accept credit and debit cards payments online from customers. Acquisition by Stripe, a US-based firm, is an indication of Paystack standing and phenomenal growth since its debut only about five years ago. It is first in its category in Nigeria and also the first Nigerian startup ever admitted into the Y Combinator, the Silicon Valley incubator that has backed major global startups, including Stripes that acquired it. Paystack was acquired by Stripe for about $200 million turning the two CEO of Paysac, Shola and Ezra, into over 9 million years. Without any fear of contradiction, the Paystack acquisition deal is the biggest Nigerian startup acquisition. Paystack has a customer base of over 60,000 people, including small business merchants, government agencies, and large corporations, including one of the leading telcos in Nigeria. Paystack has also expanded and currently provides services to companies in South Africa, Ghana, and has over 100 staffs in its payroll. This is quite a laudable feat achieved by two young Nigerians in their mid-30s, beginning a coding journey at 16 and having it yield fruits almost 20 years later isn't overnight to me. They are not overnight millionaires after all. Akinlade and Olubi are computing science degree holders from Bangkok University, Nigeria. Their net worth is reported to be in excess of $100 million each. Education and Career after bagging a bachelor's degree in computing science from Babcock University in 2006, Shala worked at Hennekin as a management trainee, specializing in database management from 2007 and left in 2009. Shortly after that, he spent the next five years working on a software called Precurio, an open source collaboration platform like Dropbox, which was used by over 200,000 individuals. 
While working on the software, a few banks reached out to him to help them build softwares. This was when he realized that he could take a stab at figuring out how to make payments easier for businesses in Africa. During his last stint as a software engineer working with banks, he saw an opportunity to solve several payment challenges that African businesses face using technology. Equipped with the technical skills to take on the challenge, and together with his co-founder Ezra, they both started to build the PaySack platform. And today, the platform serves over 17,000 businesses and processes over 15% of all online payments in Nigeria. In his words, better payment tools are one of the most important things that African businesses need to unlock their explosive potential. We think of Paystack as an amplifier of the incredible work that African business owners are already doing. With better technology tools, African businesses can be better equipped to play a brain role in the global economy. Ezra Olubi, on the other hand, won the Programmer of the Year Award for two consecutive years while a student of Babcock University. Upon graduating from school, Ezra Olubi worked as an IT administrator at Business Management Consultant Limited. He proceeded to work for North Ocean Logistics and Solutions Limited as a web application developer. He also worked as a Chief Technology Officer of Jobberman and Delivery Science. He briefly served as the Director of Magic at Alexandra Heron Limited. In 2015, Ezra Olubi, alongside Shola Akindeli, found Dead Paystack, one of the most reliable online payment systems in Nigeria. Over the years, the payment system grew to process over 15% of online transactions in Nigeria. In October 2020, one of the leading online systems in the world, Stripe, acquired Paystack for $200 million. Now, here comes the difficult part of the video. What factor played the greatest role in their success? Some might argue that it is education. A good education is vital for success. Babcock University, where both Shola and Ezra graduated from, remains one of the top private universities in Nigeria. It's a Christian institution, quality education and tuition fees in excess of $1,000 per section. Others might argue it is their background that played the greatest role in their successes. Obviously, a child from a poor home to find it difficult accessing quality education and that gives the chance of reaching career potential. Some may just say Shola and Ezra are both really talented, but what do you think? Were they just lucky, brilliant or visionary? We want to know your thoughts, so drop them in the description box of this video. Moving on, let us take a brief look at their work ethic. The Doe has been working hard to develop a software that will solve online financial transaction problems in Nigeria and by extension, Africa as a whole. In the early days, the real work was in trying to convince partners to work with them and move fast to actualize the goal of solving the challenges centered around financial transactions. Over the last five years, they have worked hard to build a formidable team of over 30 people using deep curiosity, ability to solve problems and deep empathy as the primary criteria for selecting a potential employee. Prior to the official launch of Paystack in 2016, Shola talked with several business owners to understand their payment challenges and it was very clear from the interaction with them that a large market lay waiting for their products. During its launch in January 2016, Paystack already had a waiting list of about 300 businesses, all of whose owner he had spoken with to understand their pain points and how Paystack could solve their challenges. Paystack also got inducted as the first Nigeria company into Y Combinator, a Silicon Valley based incubator. This signaled as validation that the platform was worthwhile and that Paystack would be a success. Judging from the fact that most businesses fail within the first three years of launch and that to build a company worth millions of dollars in less than five years is rare, it's hard to say that the two friends didn't work extremely hard. Based on work ethic, you have to give them a lot of credit, but then it doesn't take hard work alone to build a business, so it is safe to assume that at least one of the two friends is business savvy. 
Yes, they had a dream to solve a problem, they built a formidable team and they were hardworking. But the venture might have failed had neither of them known how to run a business. Before we head into the part of the video that is of interest to you, which is whether or not the financial technology space is still up for grabs, we would like to give our thoughts on the success of Shola and Ezra. The success story of Ezra and Shola followed the pattern structured by Brian Greene in his book Mastery. It's a great read and if you haven't read it, I highly suggest you check it out. But just as a summary, Brian Greene explains that as a master in a field, you will see solutions to problems where most people can hardly see the problems. It takes 10,000 hours and average to master any field, which is about 10 years of work. Shala and Ezra have definitely spent that long writing computer codes, so it is safe to say that they mastered their craft. Brown Green in his book also gave examples of very notable people that followed the same approach and achieved similar results. So I guess the takeaway is, irrespective of your field, if you achieve mastery in it, then you are more likely to achieve financial success unlike others in your field. Viability of Fintech Industry if you want to learn codes, then jump right in because codes are the future. Only 1 in 300 people know how to code, so this industry is heavily underserved. Shala and Ezra applied codes in the finance sector with over $9 billion in value polls. And despite high levels of competition, the vast majority of consumers are underserved. Lack of access to services, especially in rural areas, issues of affordability and poor user experience all contribute to the frustration consumers experience right across the customer spectrum. This has created an opening that fintechs have been quick to take advantage of, with many stepping up to develop enhanced propositions across the value chain to address pain points in affordable payments, quick loans, flexible savings and investments, among others. According to Frost and Sullivan, Nigeria's fintech revenue is expected to reach $543.3 million in 2022 from $153.1 million in 2017. This shows that this industry is indeed a goldmine for potential investors and active participators. Any IT expert who decides to delve into the fintech industry in a developing country like Nigeria is bound to discover new frontiers, of course, with the presupposition that you have mastered your game. Overall, I think luck played a larger role for Shola and Ezra. Granted, they worked really hard, but it is clear to see that they entered an industry that is still greatly unexploited in third world countries. Also, the great quality of education they got was due to the financial standards of their parents which they had no control over at the time. But what do you think played a larger role? Luck or hard work? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, drop names of other entrepreneurs who want us to cover their stories and we would feature them in future episodes. We'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!